I used to watch Jake and Logan though. I have a Maverick you? sweatshirt. You look like that. <laughs> yeah, but the Maverick sweatshirt's dope. Like that. Like the Maverick merch is actually sick. And it's and it when he's like when because he used to like always plug it like the hottest softest merch in the game. He's not lying. That's the one thing Logan Paul is not lying about. Like, why is this doing this? Is how nice his is shirts how nice, are. Is how nice his sweatshirt is because I bought the pink one. I wear it every time I travel now because I stick out. It's like you'll never lose me. Right. <laughs> I'm wearing a hot pink sweatshirt. Welcome to the Digital Century Podcast, <laughs> uh, the official first episode of the new season and this new run. Oh, we're not kind of, uh, counting that pilot. No, Dom. Oh, not. okay. Um, <laughs> we did do a test episode before this. Uh, it will probably be released at some point, but this will be the first official uh, episode. Uh, last time we were just testing things out. We were just making sure we had a decent setup, um, which things will still probably change as we go along and the format will change and everything is subject to change. But we wanted to do the test one before this just to make sure we kind of knew what we were doing before we got into it. And here we are. We still don't know what we're doing, but we're into it. Um, this is this is uh, I'm Jeff and I'm Dom. I'm Chase. I'm new here. Hello. Yeah, Chase is uh, <laughs> Chase is new here to the. I mean, technically Dom's new here too to the podcast. If you don't count the test episode, uh, so that's Dom. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So yeah, this is uh. This but is we great. all work together. We, we slightly, yeah. slightly, some more than others. Aka <laughs> not me. No, but you are on the website. I'm on the so, website now. Yeah. Woop, woop. You're the, the, the government uh, part of the ship, part of the crew. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. yeah, but I'm like the guy underneath that makes sure that the there's no holes poked in the bottom and I'm just like putting gum down there or something. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> I mean, Are you yeah. You're finessing so, that. So I'm really finessing well. it. Yeah. Fair enough. I don't know. They just they just hired me for a little bit. I don't know. Yeah. I'm just here. You're here. I just get paid sometimes. Oh, my gosh. Good enough. Phone call. Hey, no, it's not a phone call. My no. phone just vibrates rant violently. Do, do you have it set on like the highest setting so you know like you are never going to miss a notification no it's not it's not that bad i don't i guess you can change the sensitivity i just never did it and so people freak out all the time because i have like a samsung and so it's just the way it is i think we all do mm -hmm. wow oh my gosh this is rare and we're using an apple <sighs> blasphemy <laughs> i can't understand i don't understand how that. rare is it that when you get three people in a room that most all of them have android devices this is a new thing it's very did rare. we yeah. did we just create a record did we set a i record? think so because yeah. we're businessmen we're businessmen <laughs> we're real business people use samsung and microsoft not apple right Are you sure? we like to make things complicated <laughs> dom likes to make things complicated. i don't think it's more complicated i like it way better because I used to have Apple stuff. Like people hand me app their Apple phones because you know, let's be honest, everyone our age has one. Yeah. Besides us, obviously. Mm -hmm. I've never and owned. I have phone. no clue how to use it. Like they just hand it to me. I'm like, where's the back button? It doesn't exist. No. And I don't understand. I'm like, I don't, I literally like it's supposed to be simpler. I Which literally one? have no clue. What do you have? What? I have an S8 plus. S8 plus. I have an no. S7. Yeah. yeah. Do you not? Do you, you still using the buttons on yours? You got the oh yeah the one UI update. You didn't go to gestures yet. No, no. I don't like that. No, I want a button. You want a button. I want buttons. <laughs> you like buttons. I I like so, to be able to hit the back button. So Teslas are not for you then. Oh no, that's totally different on cars. You can. You, I mean, it's not like an actual button, but I mean, it's like on the screen. But still, you know what I mean? No, yeah, no, I get it. I get it. I, I like I like the screen real estate, but I mean, Apple products are fairly intuitive. But if you if you're used to a certain device, it doesn't matter how user friendly it is That's you're true. not going to get it just by handing it to someone yeah uh, but i would say chances are higher that an android user would have an easier time picking up and using an iphone than an iphone user picking up and using an android device just cuz android systems are a bit they're not even, as user friendly. They're not as user friendly. And that's not saying anything about anyone who owns either device. That's not saying anything about intelligence. That's just saying. Sure, it is. The, Don't the, lie. The but smarter Don't people use Androids. Yeah, we get it. <laughs> I mean, we're all sitting here, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're smart. Uh, we all got technical stuff set up. Uh, yeah, we somehow. <laughs> that's true. Let's be honest. Who could, who could set this up uh, besides you guys? Because I was just here. I mean, you set up the city council I, stuff all the time. Yeah, okay. I, you know what you do to set up city council? <laughs> you, you, you turn, turn on, on five yeah. switches, and it's there. Yeah. And then and then you pull up, you know, like the you, audio. You got to start the media encoders. That's probably oh, yeah, that's, the most complicated which, part. Actually, it is. Because mm -hmm. if you forget to hit apply. 
I don't remember. I don't think I hit apply last time. We probably Damn. don't even need to use the media encoders anymore. Like that's. I was under the impression that the media encoders were the thing that made the live streams happen. Really? Because if I don't hit that, somebody walks in five minutes into the into the um, meeting and it's like, why can't we see this? And then as soon as I hit the media encoders, Unless they it come back. Is, it might be, actually. I'm pretty sure the encoders are, are well, what because feeds what, the live well, stream. When I, what's the name of the device specifically? Is it like Blackmagic, something else? Oh, I don't even know. Because if it's for live stream, that would assume that the cam, it's feeding, uh, there's a feed either going into the camera or out of the camera, and then that's going into a computer setup. I mean, theoretically, that's how it would Unless work. Unless that's the feed specifically for the facility? Uh, all it I, is for, I think it's for the facility specifically for their, all I know is that their when, website thing. Or when I went in for the special meeting, we didn't turn it on. And What, nothing, what special meeting was for it? For the, um, some marijuana, it was like... I, we're legalizing the selling of like marijuana. Oh, that was one that happened a couple months ago, right? Yeah, yeah. But we're but we they we're having this meeting to discuss and answer some of the questions and like, well, can we do this? Can we do that? Um, it was like a last minute special meeting. Um, and yeah, we didn't set up the meeting coders. That and, might be why. I don't know. Oh yeah, and, and that's what I'm saying. It could have been because it was like a special last minute thing. Um, I don't know if it was live streamed at all. All I know is that, from what I understand, is everyone in the building, if they're there, has to have the council meeting on while they're there. Yeah. So, like, every computer has basically has it on while the council meeting is going on. It's not like that for, like, planning commission, but for when they're actually in their office, which is weird. It's like, why? Yeah. I don't understand. Of course, I don't understand how half of the things in City Hall work. I mean, I guess if you if you work at City Hall, that's kind of your job to be aware of. I guess. I guess. I don't know. It's the government. It's it's weird. It doesn't work. It does. <laughs> <laughs> it really doesn't. It doesn't it work. It does not work. Trust me. When you have politicians, it does not work. Those guys are insane. Oh, speaking of that, did was Cap still mad when you relieved me yesterday, or was he uh, grumpy? No, I mean he didn't seem that way. It was it ended almost right after you left. Are you serious? It was about like thirty minutes left, and it ended. Yeah, he came. No he, shot. No, he yeah. came back like around three thirty. Yeah, they had a scheduled thing for three thirty. How'd they get yeah. around that? Bro, so, oh, go ahead. Well, they they had a thing scheduled at three. He was just right. about to adjourn, and then he's like, "Oh wait, no, we got this thing scheduled for three. and then he was like, "Okay, are there any public comments?" No, okay, something else. Okay, adjourned. That's when you know he's grumpy. Because <laughs> Cap talks. Cap's a talker. Oh, and yeah. At, when he came back, he he said a couple of things in between. But he's like the, the president, so he has to say stuff. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But he was not having it yesterday because Arius. <laughs> Dude. Oh, I can't stand Arius. See, that's the funny thing about I working, cannot. working council is you just get into... It's almost just like you're watching... I want to say like watching Game of Thrones, but you're just watching a TV show all the time. It's just a drama, but it's actually happening. Oh gosh, but it's so slow. And it's most of the time it's stuff you just don't care about. Yeah. Well, it's funny I, to see that the, the people that come up because you see all the regulars come up. Yep. Like you got the guy who's got the, the picture. David Love. Is that who it is? The fourth. The guy, the guy has a yeah. picture of Jesus Christ. <laughs> the first monk saint. Interesting. Most dedicated man I know. Well, yeah. I mean, he said he was. Ladies, gonna, take note. David Love the fourth. <laughs> He's, <laughs> you know what his religious beliefs are. He said he, he said he he'd really come do. back. He's like, I'm gonna need like hours to finish this. He says that so. every time. He's very respectful though. It's like his three minutes is up. They're like, thanks, David. Yeah. And then he walks away. Well, yeah. All, all credit where credit's due. He's not like a jerk about it, but it's just like this isn't really on topic. But that's kind of that's the point of unscheduled it. communication. Anybody can come up and say whatever they want. True, man, man, dude. Like I had my taste of those council meetings for last night with the chief foreman. I'd already told you this, but yesterday some lady came in. Claiming that she that she was a um, like a security officer and all that stuff, and I'm like, really, lady, at your age, like you don't even look like you're fit for you know to, for much else, you know? Like she, she looked like an um, you're like not a fit middle to age. drive here, let alone to be a security officer. No, but she came in during this other guy's rant, and she comes in making noise, like she had like a, a big ass bag or two, and just like these huge stacks of paper, and I'm like, can you like be any more? louder like come on like i can even hear you wait where were you at the chief forum where was that at though sunnyside high uh oh in their cafeteria and then when she finally talks she starts rambling about like 
her experience with racism totally off topic. And then she kept wanting to talk about unrelated things to the chief forum. So, and then the moderator was just trying to keep her on point. Like, okay, anything else about the chief? Blah, 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 blah. And then she's like, no, I got another blah, blah, blah. I'm like, lady, just, just, just stop. Just stop. That's how it's been getting at the council meetings. There have been some people that come in that are just way off topic all the time. Yeah. It's usually about like the homeless situation. Yeah. But it's, it's been getting worse ever since uh, I started like actually working. So like January, like last semester was not nearly as bad. It's weird. It's basically ever since the new councilman started working there, it's been getting worse. And I don't know if that has anything to do with them or if it just so happens that the timing is correct for them to come in and it'd be bad. It's interesting though, but like it's the, this council is definitely the most hostile council that I've seen. And they try to like, the best part about politicians, especially these guys is because is they all make jokes like they basically make fun of each other as a joke, but you can tell when they're laughing. They're like, <laughs> "I'm gonna kill this guy." Oh, oh uh, you know? like they're steadily hinting oh, at the they mean it. Oh, they hate each other. Well, they're always like, "See, hate each other." Well, even Cap at the end was like, yeah. "See, we're working together. This is what happens when we work together." And I've heard not only him say that, but other, you know, others of them say that as well. It's like, oh, that did not seem. No, it's it's not good. It's basically. It's basically Soria, um, Asparza, and um, Arius. Asparza and Arius are the new ones. Hmm. Everybody else is near the end of their terms. Like it's like their last. You know they've been there for like six years, so they have two more, I think. And then the freshmen are just insane. But that's like that's insane. the theme with politics. Not even just with our like president, but with <clears throat> any politician is to be aggressive and to be. The the raw voice. It's you know. a dog eat dog world in the in the world of politics. Well, especially now, it's just because we've we've gone through that system of very formal, very you know by the books, and now it's like the new generation. They're like, no, we don't want that. We need people who are real and who are more grounded and being very aggressive. Yeah, portrays that at least in my opinion. It's usually different with freshmen though. Like freshmen aren't usually as talkative as these guys yeah are. well they're probably trying to make a statement make a you know <laughs> yeah place they all want to be aoc or they're just yeah. trying to be careful just because politicians you know corrupt and who knows if you believe in the sort of thing of like you know politicians are out to get each other and all that stuff you know they're just trying to get a lay of the land probably just figure out who's who and what who's for what and they, they don't want to say anything that can give them a bad image especially yeah. so early in their term you know yeah but Usually, if people are worried about their image, they don't talk as much at, at first. I don't know. It, it They're very interesting. The freshmen are very interesting. And then Soria has become more... Apparently, Sawyer was like, was like them. And then when she was president, she couldn't talk as much. Because I don't think the president's allowed to say quite as much. Because they're supposed to be like almost the moderators. Ba- yeah, basically. So I don't think they're allowed to talk as much. Because that's what Chris was telling me when he was training me. Because he was like, oh, sorry, I just talks. And then it wasn't that bad. And that now- that kind of makes sense, actually, because I I do the board minutes here and the chairman doesn't say a whole lot. They'll bring up yeah. like the new topics, continue on to the next thing, you know, and then they'll bring up the topic like, OK, blah, 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 blah. Here are my thoughts. And then brings it up to the table. You know, everyone says whatever they need to say. Um, so, yeah. I just feel like there's a lot of grandstanding now to the point where it's just drags everything on. And so like cap is mad about it. Cause it's just like, guys, no, like nobody really cares that much about you. You can stop talking about what you did. It's like, <laughs> or what you think, like we get it. It's interesting. Like it, yeah. it's, it's definitely the like council is super dramatic now, but it's all really passive aggressive. Uh, as, I mean, there's no other it's in, it's, way they can really be. It's ridiculous. Speaking of, uh, panels full of people how about that mandalorian <laughs> panel that took place the a couple what? weeks ago did you, the mandalorian panel did nice you watch segue, that at all? jeff <laughs> see a segue is not good if you mention the segue that's the point i have to, it. I, I have to tease you about that so did you watch anything from star wars celebration oh all? you're talking about that no i yeah. did not i did not watch anything about star wars celebration okay even on to the I next am, topic even though i am a star wars nerd but i i will interject when when needed okay uh, well, we'll move past it pretty quick. Um, yeah, so I was kind of disappointed with how the Mandalorian panel went. When we, in the test episode, I mentioned, because that was the day before that the Mandalorian panel was going to happen, 
And at the end, it's like Dom and I were like, hey, what are we excited about? And one of the things I was like, yeah, I'm really excited for the Mandalorian panel because I'm excited to see like a teaser or mm-hmm. like something from it. And they had the live stream of the panel and they had like a sizzle reel and they had um, a teaser and then some uncut footage. And right before they cut to it, they're like, okay, we're going to say goodbye to the live stream, but we'll be back in a minute. And they showed that stuff to the people at Celebration, but not on the live stream, which contradicts all of the other panels. Like the episode nine panel, they showed the teaser to the audience and to the live stream. Mm -hmm. The Clone Wars panel, they showed all that stuff to the live stream and the panel. Um, or in the audience. So it was just really disappointing that The Mandalorian, which is arguably one of the more exciting things that Disney is pushing out in the Star Wars category because it's the first like live action series that they're doing. Yeah. Um, oh, that's what that is. Okay. Yeah. Like I had heard of it, but I didn't know what it was going to be exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, um, do you know anything about it at all? Are you completely Not blind really. to it? So I'm it's, pretty blind. It's basically, it takes place. Um, I believe five years after Return of the Jedi, so after episode six, um, and it follows a Mandalorian bounty hunter doing stuff, you know, doing bounty hunter stuff. So it's like right after the Empire. uh, It's essentially dissolved, and it's like the New Republic hasn't really been formed yet. So it's in this really kind of weird time for the galaxy. Um, And then we follow a Mandalorian character. Uh, And that's the background of it. But overall, like, the Mandalorian panel was just, there wasn't a lot of info in it. Like, for just the people watching the live stream, like, the panel itself, there wasn't a lot. It's, like, stuff we kind of already knew, and you get to see some of the cast, and that's basically it. That's it. And, like I said, they had to cut away a couple times during the live stream for the video portions, and that was kind of disappointing. So, you know, we got we got those leaked phone videos of all the stuff, but it looks really good. I really wish we just mm. had the footage available to watch, but we don't. <laughs> Not yet. I've kind of lost interest in Star Wars as much right now, at least, because... <clears throat> Are you uh, burned out? Kind of. It's just more of there's other things that have interested me more, like Game of Thrones right now is much more interesting to me. But even that's kind of fading for me right now, because I felt like the last two episodes were so like pointless. So... We won't get into it because he's so Dom's still like that's true on the first season, um, but I am caught up. So what I will say is that <laughs> I get that they were definitely very like dialogue focused. It was very like, but you got that like it's just a big uh, there's build stuff. Up. Yeah, it's a big build up to the end, and it's like we're gonna give everyone their farewells. You know, it's like we're preparing for. The end, essentially. The end game. Yeah, they're they're preparing uh, for the end of the show. Yeah. But that's like I, I just don't expect that. You from didn't them. think the last one was cool though? Like, like there was the cool stuff parts. I feel like they're just drawing things out way too much. Like there's four episodes left. Do you but, know what how much has to happen in yeah, four but do you know episodes? How long those wait, episodes wait, wait, are? wait. Four episodes left in the air two. There's only six episodes in yeah. this season. But, what the but, hell? But shush. But each episode, okay, the last two have, yes, exactly. The last four episodes are going to be an hour and a half each Damn. compared to the normal length, which is like 45 minutes to an hour. All I know is that for me to be satisfied with the end, they but, don't have enough time. But realistically, and again, we got to avoid spoilers for Dom, uh-huh. but realistically, how much left is there you have four episodes each an hour and a half all right we gotta How take care of the more? north and then the south right. and then somebody's got to figure out who's you know, getting where but, but you you want to you want to take like the basic points of what needs to happen you have two major things you have the white walkers and you have king's landing right that's it those are the two main things they can wrap that up in four episodes at an hour and a half each. I don't know. And well, I, I mean, I don't know, given the context where you guys are talking about, I can only imagine really, but um, they've already gone past where the books ended, right? Because oh, yeah. George yeah. Martin hasn't and, even gone that far. And George, and George has said that the ending of the show is going to be probably different. differ from the books. So is he just waiting? No, George. He, yeah. No, George is just old. George has them done as far as I know. Well, he also types them on a typewriter. Yeah, but he had huh, old he, school. He knows where it's ending. Like apparently, he has everything outlined. It's just he hasn't written it. Oh down. yeah, yeah. That's the only thing. But, but yes, he does use a typewriter. Yeah. But anyway, I'm assuming that's for hacking. At this point, oh. At least. 
that's you know, a, that's, I don't that's think that's point. it, but that is a good. That is a that's good the point, point of a. I don't know, you probably you guys probably probably, probably yeah, you guys probably didn't watch Gossip Girl, the show. No, loved Gossip Girl, top three show. Um, <laughs> anyways, uh, in like the last season, one of the main characters writes a book on a typewriter so it can't get hacked. I think that's the whole point. Well, that is an interesting. If it's not on a server. It's true. Just and a also, hard copy. You can't hack a hard copy. Also, can't get just destroyed by you a can, server going down. You can burn that too. The hard copy. <laughs> you can. Have burn you ever thought them. about like what would happen if Google Drive just stopped working? Like their servers just stopped. That's always the reason why I always prefer a physical copy over a digital. Like with movies, I always want a hard copy just because I know di- data can be corrupt or lost. Well, also there, I heard something before where it was like. Would you rather get a Blu-ray or watch it, you know, via, via streaming or even digitally? And it's like, well, digital is easier, but you also—that's like five gigabytes for a stream or five hundred megabytes versus fifty gigabytes. So you're gonna have way better image quality and way better quality on a physical disc because there is just more storage there. There's physically true more storage. I always go for physical copy just because of the the improved quality. It's a it's just more durable in my opinion because otherwise you're you're relying on for one the internet if that cuts out if your, if your cable subscription or whatever provider cuts it cuts out then you won't have it if this particular pro- pro- a provider goes out despite your internet connection then you're also screwed like there's so many variables again you know the disc could break or whatever but i just feel like as an owner you will directly be much more careful of your property <clears throat> Um, well, most of the time you get a code for a digital version anyways now, so it's kind of not as big as a deal. I literally live stream everything. I yeah. don't think I own anything. Me as well. However, I'm going to try and break that habit because I would like to start building up a library of physical media and, you know. Call me old fashioned, yeah. but I still do that. Yeah, I just feel like physical media is going to be irrelevant sooner rather than later. So yeah, Given like, the new generation, like the... You know, post millennials and after that, and then they'll be they'll, they they're growing up in an age where it's all digital. You know, they can get things on, on their phones and all that stuff. I think we're the last generation really to really appreciate physical stuff. That's I true. mean, it definitely eliminates the friction with consuming media. You don't have to put in a disc. You don't have to do anything with a disc. You literally just tap an icon and it's there. That is minimizing the friction as much as possible. You know, because people want it easier. People are lazy. Yeah, but I'll, yeah. Hey, don't talk about me like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but man. yes, very lazy. Yeah. Um, the big thing going on right now is Endgame, which none of us have seen it, so no. we can't really talk much about it. But it did come out last night. It did come out Just last for... night. Uh, yeah, that's like breaking records with box office things. and You know how much they spent on just advertisement? Well, a lot, I assume. I would assume at least a hundred million. Dude, it, they spent over two hundred million dollars. They like obviously that's a record, but like, I mean, you, you most people don't make like full blown movies for that much. Like, I'm pretty sure Infinity. I'm pretty sure they spent more on advertisement for this movie than they did for like the entire budget of Infinity War. It's like they know they're going to get their money. That's insane back. how much money they're, and they're all they're going to get. It back like tripled or more probably. Yeah, they they know this movie's gonna be a big hit. So it's ridiculous, man! They caught us. They got us hooked. Quick Google search reveals that the the predicted earnings. So this isn't you know any hard evidence or anything. Which is one trillion dollars. Uh, <laughs> about, <laughs> about a quarter of no, actually not a quarter. Uh, it's only millions. Uh, it says it should make anywhere between two hundred and sixty million and two hundred and eighty five million. Dollars in the first oh, weekend, yeah, and just on in the its, first weekend. in its debut, yeah, its yeah, debut, yeah. um, yeah, highest opening weekend in the U.S. If it cracks two hundred and fifty-seven points, it will. There's million. no way it doesn't. Like, how is it? How does this not? Yeah. I mean, it. It's literally been like an anticipated movie for like five years. A lot, yeah, at least. Well, no, well, twenty twelve. Twenty twelve is well when, since the first since they started getting the Avengers together. Right. This is 20, the. Right. And the first one's 2012. So ever, yeah. I think ever since the end of of Avengers, the the first Avengers movie with that the end Thanos. credit, the the Thanos scene, I thought it was a Red Skull at first, but then I, I didn't know much about Marvel back then. But when it was like Thanos, everyone was freaking out. I was like, oh my gosh, this is the big baddie. They're gonna build up to this, and then over the next several years, eight years later, yeah, yep. 
Have you, have you, either of you gone back and looked at all of the post credit scenes with Thanos since Infinity War came out? Not recently, but I know, I know them. Yeah. Wait, he since looks, Infinity War came out? Yeah. There's been post credit scenes since Infinity oh, War. Oh, came okay, out? sorry. Since I the first that Avengers. Weird. Since he first started appearing, oh. but ever since Infinity War came the out. The only one you? I remember him being in is the Avengers one, where they're like. Where he comes back and he's like, uh, the, the weird dude. He's like, oh, Thanos, we oh, failed. Yeah. And he just turns around and smiles. Yeah. He, he looks different. His he eyes looks are different. He yeah. so different. It's funny how different he looks. It's just like the CGI got so much better and his design got so much well, better. Well, and they had like an actual actor to base him off of. Because it does yes. look like Josh Brolin. Like it, yeah. it looks like him. Yeah. The funny thing is that they didn't, like he's completely CG. Like there's not even like, it. like Josh Brolin was never there. Well, he no. They, they had him in a capture shoot, a motion capture. I heard suit. that they didn't have him in there at all. Yeah, no, oh, he, did they? He, yeah, he was performing capture. Oh, I, I could have sworn somebody no, said that I, he didn't, I, they didn't capture him at all. I think maybe in Guardians of the Galaxy, when we first see him like in his full form, yeah. just turning around in the chair, I think that might have been CGI. Oh, yeah. But in Infinity War, it was Josh Brolin in a. In a he looks pretty capture. similar to the way he did in Guardians, though. What? Right. I feel like when like, he turns around the chair, like he no. doesn't look that much. I feel like his face was a little wider in Guardians of the Galaxy, and his eyes, his eye color was different. Hey, he, you know, he worked. He went to the gym and worked out. Got thinned out his face. Mm-hmm. No workout. I'm trying to find trying to find an image of uh, the comparison. Mm. Oh, here we go. go ahead. That's the one from Guardians of the Galaxy. Can we just talk about how lame it was? Okay, as I just watched Infinity War, how lame it was that that one like telepathic guy died. Which telepathic guy? The 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 main the main like henchman for Thanos, the guy that is not what it's called telepathic. Oh, he, he telepathic dude. Oh, yeah, 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 like like that guy was His basic. Children. That guy was unstoppable. And then the way he was stopped was by blowing a hole and him getting sucked down into outer space. Like I was like, you you underestimated was, your opponent. That was so lame. There I was like, it's kind of like, it's hard to see on the monitor. Oh, he's very but. blue. Yeah, so he was like really purple, and then he was really blue, and then he's pink. Yeah, see, that's why I think that he looked a little bit wider compared to there. Uh, then his eye colors are different. Yeah. And yeah, he has more wrinkles too on his chin over here. Yeah, and like the lighting was definitely different. Okay, he's aging. But he's he's aging. getting younger. See, he has more wrinkles. Literally, he has more wrinkles. Also, the CG just got better, and the lighting yeah. got better, and everything got better. Yeah. His eyes are so bright in the other ones. It looks like his brown eyes in the one on the right and then the new one. Yeah. I don't know. Thankfully, it doesn't really matter because he's like not really an integral part until this. Until well, part. yeah, he they were just teasing him all up until this. Uh, this and I, I've never been a comic book guy. So like when Thanos turned around in the in, in the Avengers, my friends were like, oh, just like you were saying. Mm-hmm. And I was like, who the hell is that? I have no yeah. clue. Yep. And they're like, that's Thanos. And they had to explain it to me. But even then, I haven't looked at any comic stuff at all. So, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure in Infinity War, like, when, everybody, when, like, half of the people disappear, like, he actually wins in the comics, right? So, like, people so, knew that this was happening. Yeah, so... Like, for, nerds know, and nerds know what happens in Endgame, too. So, when it, right? came, when it came to the movie, people were for sure anticipating that, that characters were going to die. And the way, though, in the comics, um, Thanos... And I never read the comics. I just done some research on it. Thanos is trying to appease late, like death itself of it's Lady Death, and he's right. he's in love with her, and yeah, then yeah, he yeah. he wipes out the whole universe, and he kills all the Avengers, and then at some point he gets bored and he's like, okay, let me just bring it back. So he actually kills all the Avengers, all the X Men characters, uh, da- Daredevil, literally everyone in the Marvel universe teams up against him and they die. Jesus, have you guys seen the um the the Tony Stark theory where he uses the infinity gauntlet. No. Okay. So he, here's the, here's the concept, right? If you watch and I didn't, I didn't notice it. I like, I kind of noticed, but like you really notice it. Like, so basically oh, this is the is idea. It, it's with his hand, his right? Hand, his arm. Oh, so, okay, he basically, so the idea is he gets the infinity gauntlet in this, in this, yeah. um, in the end game. And that's how he dies. Because he's, he snaps to, I don't know if it snaps to bring it back, or he does something with the Infinity Gauntlet, that's all I know, where it kills him. But apparently, because it's like so powerful, it causes him so much pain that it sends pain back through his entire past. And so like when you, when you watch, it, and it's consistent, like early on, like Iron Man 1, he's like, 
ah, like my my left arm feels kind of weird. And then as it goes, it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. And then it's even wor- it's the worst in an era in Infinity War. And it's like it's st- like I like I don't know if it's actually a thing. What happened to his arm in Infinity War? Nothing. Nothing. Nothing's happened to his arm yet. Okay. But you're he saying you saying in an earlier movie he was in pain. Yeah. Like he he's been like Civil War they talk about it. The first Avengers he talks about it. In Iron Man two he talks about it. Like it's literally been a consistent theme. So you're just like, oh, it's just it's just Tony Stark. So I heard that theory about his arm. I never heard that part of it though, where it sends pain to his past. I just heard that like, oh, they talk about his left arm a lot. And for some reason that was supposed to mean that he was gonna wield the gauntlet. Right. But that didn't make a lot of sense to me because so, I'm like, what, why does that matter? That is so interesting. But now that you said that part, it's weird. It's weird. But wow, that that is a neat way to tie all the those movies together. We're gonna come back in two weeks after Dude, we've all it's seen a, it. And it's just, amazing how much is like the little details in Marvel. How much? How many details are? Because like, yeah, it's like a frou frou. Like, honestly, they're kind of dumb. They're they're not. You know, you you can't take them seriously. They're 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 strictly there for entertainment, really. Like some of the storylines are really bad, especially in the ones where they're not like all together. Mm-hmm. But like, how much detail that there, there is and has been since the beginning? Yeah, I mean they planned it out really like, well. Like they literally knew where it was going to end Kevin in two thousand eight when they had when they released Iron Man. They mm-hmm. knew. No, uh, actually, no. Uh, it was the Incredible Hulk. That's when they decided. I saw the uh, the director's commentary of the Incredible Hulk. And it was the director and I think Kevin Feige. At that moment, they were trying to figure out, okay, do we just make The Incredible Hulk its own thing? Or do we plan for an Avengers team up? And then they said, then that's when we decided, you know what, let's do an Avengers team up. To my understanding, though, and this has been changed recently, I always thought The Incredible Hulk was not part of this MCU. It is. But it is. Yeah. I didn't know that. They just had a there's, recast. Right. They had a recast, but like. Recast and then there's property um, property issues because Hulk is not actually under Marvel. It's under Paramount or whatever other company. Some other one, yeah. Yeah. Which is like the Spider-Man thing with Sony. That's why it took us so long to get him. Yeah. Yep. That's why. That's that's how it was with Lord of the Rings. When it oh, came yeah. In, when I was finally allowed to watch it. Because I, of my conservative house. I have only Ooh. seen the first oh, one no. and part oh, of the second no. one. Oh no so you uh, haven't even seen helms deep is that what you're telling me yeah the greatest fight scene of all time and i don't remember the first the greatest movie. battle of all time you, you've never seen that no. you know what i'm not a huge huge lord of the rings fan but man i love those movies these people are crazy <laughs> lord no, of the rings is the best no, at no, least no, you no, like the I'm movies not denying no, no, you. I've, I've, seen seen the bo- I've seen the movies i dude i've seen the animated movie of the hobbit Oh, dude, so have I. That that eighties version, yeah, like that, that was not good. Yeah, that that the, that shit. Although, was in dark. my opinion, the other Hobbit wasn't good either. So, I like the Hobbit. Uh, I'm not really sure what the issue is with the on the fan base with those movies, but I like them. Plenty, mostly for me. It was What's CGI. wrong with it? CGI, CGI ruined it. So, like the prequels and Star Wars. No, it was way worse than that. It's worse. Oh, it was way worse. I thought it was horrible. Like because especially if you watch. The first three, like the, the Fellowship and the Two Towers and all that stuff, like the CGI was crap, but they didn't, they use CGI for establishing shots and that's it. Oh, it's kind of like the argument for the prequels in terms of there's way too much and yes. T- uh, okay. Yes. Because if you just, just go watch, um, where, where are they in the Hobbit? They're not in Moria, but when they, when they have that first fight in the Hobbit, where they're um they're all captured and then they're like killing all the the orcs and the, there's that big fat orc there first of all that that guy like you can just tell you could just tell but if you go and watch um like the um like Helm's Deep like sure the establishing shot that shows you like the ten thousand orcs is totally CG and it looks horrible by these standards technically it was in 1999 that they did it so let's give them a break but then you watch the actual fight scenes where it's literally thousands of extras. And they're all wearing costumes and they're all perfect. Mm-hmm. And every fight is like complete. So it's basically the argument between the original trilogy and the prequels. Yeah, it's insane. Like the difference I is totally see that insane. Yeah. Like if you like just go watch Helm's Deep and then watch any other fight, especially the other Lord of the Rings, like the Hobbit stuff. It like you just feel sick when you watch the Hobbit. It's yeah. just gross. No, I, I totally see that from uh, Helm, uh, Helm's Deep to 
uh, the fight for uh, 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 what was it, Minas Tirith, yep. and and uh, the very last one. Yep, mm-hmm. I see that. Like the only thing that they, the only fighting that they CGI'd was like the um, the Nazgul's um, dragon guys. Mm-hmm. Like that was CGI'd, and then like the super tall guy that Viggo Mortensen fights in the last scene, Return of the King. Mm-hmm. Like it's the only thing they CGI. And there's 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 just thousands. Like the only the only thing that's gonna beat that is the Game of Thrones thing that's coming up this weekend, uh, or like theoretically. Yeah, I mean we don't. <laughs> Fifty five days. To shoot one battle, that's in, insane. In if you need all those different uh, in angles, game, yeah. in, game of, in Game of Thrones, the that, next the next took, one is the biggest battle. It's the biggest battle sequence ever in television, and almost bigger than or like almost as big or bigger than Helm's Deep. People 55. died. People actually died filming the Helm's Deep battle. Like three people died. Damn. From what? From falling. Like they legitimately died. Like it's crazy. Like if you <laughs> haven't seen Helm's Deep, bro, it's insane. How many people it's died? It's fifty Game minutes of long. It's fifty minutes long. Really? Just Helm's Deep battle itself, from no, start to finish, no, no, no. is the, fifty the, minutes. The Helm's, the Helm's Deep. I remember as a kid, it excited me. That that battle was legit. Oof. It well, because because at one point they like blow something up, and so there's like bodies like flying. It's 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 insane. It's all realistic. It's it's so good. The so, music too. Oh my god. Oh yeah, it's. The main man. Man, I just got myself chills right Dude, now. right? It wasn't wasn't it Hans Zimmer? No, it wasn't Hans Zimmer. Who was it that did Lord of the Rings? Howard Shore. Howard Shore kills it. It's so good. Well, I need to go and watch this. You have thing. to go watch it. I got the whole uh, all the movies on the You Blue have to watch Rachel extended edition. edition. Do you have the extended edition on Blu-ray? Ooh, Probably I not. No, I don't think so. It's hard to get the extended, but you have to watch the extended because it's like four hours. Why well, is it hard to get the extended? Is that not they don't do make they... them anymore? Oh really? So that's yeah. not the one they they sell then. No. Why? Um, I'm not entirely sure, but like you, have, like they're almost like collectibles now. Like this is like Blade Runner trying to get the like director's cut and then the cinematic. Yeah. Now Lord of the Rings was the first one to like do it, but it's like, but like you see a director's cut, it's like maybe like you know ten more minutes. Yeah. It's fifty more minutes in Lord of the Rings. Like there's so much more. It goes from a three hour movie to a three hour and fifty minute movie. And those movies are pretty long as they are. Yeah, yeah, three hours is a long time. Like it's pretty, they're pretty slow. But. It reminds me of that stupid thing that was going around. People were complaining, like, "Oh my gosh, how can we watch three hours worth of Endgame?" Lord Dude, of the Rings fans, right? <laughs> it's like we got that shit covered already. I was like, "Give me a six-hour movie with intermission, and I'm fine." Seriously, just act- make sure not to drink anything. Yeah, there's actually intermission in Lord of the Rings too, because because when they first did the extended, they had to put them on two different discs because the discs weren't good enough. So they could only put an hour and a half. I remember each. I used to own the VHS, VHS tapes of yeah. Lord of the Rings. The Return of the King was two discs or two VHS tapes. Yeah. But do you think we'll ever get to the point where we have like little SSDs that we just plug in? I hope so. And play movie instead of discs. Like no more scratching. You don't have to worry about moving it or anything. You literally oh, no, no, just, just have breaking it. it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You you just have an SSD type thing. And you put it in. It's like one of those black magic SSDs you know, for council. You just slot it in and that's it. I mean, it's possible. It's just that you got to think of the consumer market and what they're ready for. You know, you have to slowly introduce that technology and it wouldn't be a big hit at first. Just like DVDs were slow to start off and then Man, Blu-ray. if it gave you better quality than a Blu-ray in terms of how much data you can fit per second being displayed... And you like no the tech savvy people would get onto that for sure, but it's always this rule. I learned it in school where, like, when it first gets introduced, you got the guaranteed amount of people to to get into it at first, like the investors, the believers, and then there's like the majority that are slowly to to pick up into it or something like that. And then there's the one market, the older demographic, that they're just slow on it. So yeah, screw the older people. They don't so know. I totally would eventually get into that, but then it's like we're already used to something. I don't know. I feel like. At some point, we would, we would get there, but it would be a slow process. I think everything's just gonna be cloud, just everything. I don't think we're gonna have anything physical anymore. It's possible, oh, especially with the gaming. Yeah, yeah. I mean, most things are going to cloud anyways. Most people are using streaming services. Stupid cloud. Here's the thing with your whole like quality, like a visual debate. Most no, people don't. Care. Nobody has that tech. Like like with 4K right now, like well, it's, it's like it's 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 a good thing to but like it's, it's not even record in 4K. But how many people can actually watch 4K? I'm not Maybe I'm not talking about the like, population. Maybe I'm not just talking about like pixels though. I'm talking about like color 
and like color depth and yeah but because when you watch game of thrones for instance there's a lot of black there's a lot of dark areas have you ever noticed the grain and like the just artifacts that are there because you're streaming it because there's only so much data that they can cram into that stream that is true so if you have more that's what i mean we have more data i'm not talking about like resolution i'm talking about the color depth and like Sure, but your your, you your screen itself still has to be able to handle that type of depth as well. Yeah. And I don't think people have it, the quality or like the care. Even if they do have the quality, they'll understand that, sure, yeah. you can have a 4K or an 8K TV, but if you're, let's say with this camera, if the TV is that far away from you, you don't, you're not getting that, you're not seeing that 4K quality, you're seeing it at then at like 1080. Mm. So you have to be right up close to it. So I feel like in a way, 4K quality is like a gimmick. I know it kind of goes it off what you're right you're, now. What you're, I was say, you're not resolution. I understand what that's you're... true. Yeah, yeah, but resolution still like helps because. But in terms of my argument of pushing more data, it was not referring right. to resolution. But I feel like internet speeds are just going to get better to the point where you can just push which yes more is, data. is fair and also Fiber. I was even going to say most people don't care. Like the, as the long as they can view market. it, that's yeah. all that matters. Yep. Yep. You know, unless you know about it, you don't know. Unless you can, yeah. Unless you can like pick it out, you don't. Literally, ignorance is bliss. It's like unless you know, if which you know, is, you know. Which is why, because I just bought a new TV recently for a game. What do you get? I got the like the TLC like fifty five inch or TCL. Sorry, TCL fifty five oh. inch. Is 4, it four K? Smart yada, yada. everything. Smart TV. Yeah, it's really cheap. It's not. The, it's not sell, the best. Do they even sell any TVs over like forty inches that aren't smart anymore? I don't think they sell T like new TVs aren't not smart. Right. They're all smart. Yeah. Though. Cause yeah. Why wouldn't they be? Yeah. True. But anyways, so it's really, it's, it's funny cause it's like a gimmick. It's the same thing with, like there's nothing 3D. more that's annoying to me than when I see AT&T commercials right now. Oh, the 5G? The five. Okay. First of all, it's 5G, 5G e? E. e. The first step to 5G is, is literally what the, se- the person says. So it's literally 4G Plus. Plus. And that's it, or four, or like what Verizon calls it, four G LTE, because Verizon's the only one that's actually doing actual five G, and there's and they're the only ones that have phones that can handle it. But the problem is that AT and T's like, yeah, we have five G now. It's like, no, yeah. you don't. And plus, and that's the that's another thing. Like people don't understand that you can't like I can't just have this phone and start using five G. It doesn't nope. work that way. This thing doesn't know how to handle that kind of a reception. So it's like. And so, and then you go and like to Best Buy and stuff. And no, that's they, how they get people like, oh yeah, you know, exactly. it's all marketing. That's it. They, Cause they know the general population is stupid. It's insane because like you go into Best Buy and they have like the, all the TVs are just like the perfect quality and just it like you, you go in there and you're just like, wow, they know how to sell it. None of that exists in the world. All that flavor. It's literally just for that. Like they, like the, the way that they like show like the differences in color and all that stuff. It's like, you can't, you can't stream well, or buy Anything that looks like that. That's why demos are stupid on yeah. TVs when they have the, oh, we're going to show you the demo of like what this TV can do. And it's like, okay, that's cool that the TV can do that. But what can the services that I'm using do to utilize that? Yeah. And in most right. cases, nothing. It's, they don't. Yeah. Because it's a lot of money. Just we don't f- have the infrastructure for it. Like, But I do see one day having that infrastructure of pushing a lot of data at once. I mean, there's even like something that I read about, like not even needing a wired connection anymore. Like routers don't even need to be connected to anything. Like we'll just have straight from the satellite to the router to your computer. Oh yeah. You know, it's like we we're eventually probably going to move out of needing any sort of hardware because we'll have that infrastructure. That's so far away though. Oh like, yeah. You can't have five yeah. Bluetooth devices in the same area without it messing up. Oh yeah. We're still like, there's like, that's going to take hundreds of years yeah I feel like but i mean then again we may actually never not reach that we think we will but yeah we may not like I, yeah i don't know from from what i've learned and i could be totally wrong and it's just again what i've learned like if we ever get to that point where you don't need a wired connection great but i from what i see wireless the signal degrades over mm-hmm. distances so that's why a wired connection is a secure connection same strength from start to end as long as there's no interference so you're not cutting the cable you'll never catch me playing games on a wireless connection you know you, you know will your never PCs, catch me doing that Ethernet. if i have an option <laughs> if i can connect wired i will always and then you're yeah. also fighting the other signals in the air 
uh, the frequencies, yeah. interruptions. I, I saw a thing with, um, it was an Apple presentation, and it was, I think it was a compilation of every time Steve Jobs got upset. And one of them was he was trying to show off the iPhone and like Wi-Fi. And he's like, all right, now I need all of you who are typing on your laptops and playing on your phones to please turn them off and put them away because there's too many of you in here and the Wi-Fi signal's interfering. So I can't show you this demo. Do you want to see this demo? Okay, well then put your stuff away. Basically. And it's like, yeah, because when you get a ton of people in one room, even today, you still, like it doesn't work. It's just there's too much. You know, it's trying to fit... All that bandwidth. Through a small that. little tube. Well, yeah, because uh, when... I'm going to nerd myself out here because I'm a Call of Duty person. I'm a Call of Duty nerd. When they moved from Xbox to PS4 as their like official console, because they still play on console, um, the, the very first tournament they had was when PS4 first came out. And so they all had Bluetooth-connected devices. And when you have hundreds of PS4s in the same building right next to each other, all connected to Bluetooth you would just start controlling somebody else's guy. <laughs> Dang. So they were literally like, and, and it happens like, uh, cause I still have a PS4, the first gen. It happens. Like if you're not directly plugged in, your controller will just stop. And like, it'll just drift on its own because it's just, it's like Bluetooth just isn't good. And like, that's like one of the better wireless connections kind of that we have is Bluetooth. And it just like, so people would just be running around in tournaments. They didn't even like, they didn't even finish the tournament because they couldn't. And you couldn't hardwire in a controller at that point. Like if you plugged it into the PS4, it wouldn't do anything. It was always Bluetooth. So they they were trying to play this tournament and <laughs> and they would just be controlling other people's guys at some point. Or randomly their guy would just turn around because somebody else's controller just like crossed. It was it's hilarious. And then that's when the wired controllers came out. <laughs> exactly. I was actually Heard watching here first. That's this right. was a couple months ago. Sophia. They were doing a spacewalk. And you know how they like live stream their spacewalks yeah. typically? I was watching it and this was like my first time watching it being live streamed and I was looking at all the live comments. Oh my. Toxic, I'm sure. You want to talk <laughs> about the most toxic environment that I've seen. Every other comment, and I'm not even exaggerating, every other comment was flat, underwater. <laughs> That's a nice backdrop you got there. <laughs> no curve. <laughs> the best thing about it was that it was just those those one liners. It wasn't even like, hey, look at that. There's no curvature. It's literally just flat. flat. Underwater. Just <laughs> by different people every time. Is there anything better than memes on the internet? Is there anything better than Twitch chat? I like people actually like the fact that people can actually think that there's this like flat. It's is so just as someone who's been to the other side multiple times of the of the world. And yeah, like, but and, it's and has just, flown around it in like different ways. It's like, well, there's a reason why this way takes longer than but, this way. But how do you, you know? how do you know? Because I know. No, because your no, boy, your boy's you know? seen it. Okay, when I was flying over England the first time, or you can and you could see like Dublin. I was like, that's Dublin. I know it. And sure enough, it was. You look at the map. There it is. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> They're not lying to me. You know, I know exactly where the I'm map going. that the the leaders of shh, all the countries shh, put together to shh, brainwash you. With the chemtrails and everything. Oh, that's right. The chemtrails. Chemtrails. It's all I, I can't even get into that stuff. <laughs> it's like, just enjoy your life, people. You yeah, know, the, people that, the people that are talking about it like that have never been outside. She remind me of those people that claim that fossils are just man-made things dug into the earth. It's got to offend Ooh. you. No, it I haven't heard that. Yeah, I learned about that when I was a geology minor at State. Ooh. And the, my professor was like, Okay, if you think about that argument, who would in their right mind spend all their time digging like hundreds or thousands of miles into the earth just to put a fake bone? Like, who would do that? Okay, first of all, it was probably pretty close to the surface when they did it. Or something like that. But it's like, who would actually do that to put in all that time and effort all over the world? But also, why would you I've hide never heard that and not just be like, hey, we found this and that's it? Like, why would you go through the effort to hide it and then have someone dig it up when you can literally just be like oh we dug it up right there then really we found it yeah that's it the best thing recently i've heard about dinosaurs is the whole joke it's like we don't actually know what they sounded like so what did they sound like you know what i mean like we have no clue well we just started getting into the whole fact that they had feathers like that's well, still yeah. a relatively new yeah, but like, thing getting out but to like the, the memes that come out of like what a dinosaur actually sounds like, and you know it's like a chicken or something like squawking. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> you know, it's like it's like the goat yelling. So like the, the T Rex is, is just like it sounds like a cat meowing. We need you know, to go back like, through Jurassic Park and 
redo all the sounds in it. Yeah, well, people have done that already. Oh, have they? Worth oh, God. Worth, a, no- worth a watch. <laughs> oh, boy, it's here so, we go. It's so funny. It's just like... Uh, just a mat like it's it's funny because we're just we just take it so for granted that it's like this is the way it is. It's like we don't know that. Not a hundred percent, but we'll never know. Probably. Science, because science is never wrong. Okay. That's it's not, why it's science. It's it's never ever it's it's never ever changing. Never. And science never changes and everything we know right now is a hundred percent factual. A hundred percent. The world's gonna end in ten years. And if we don't pass the Green New Deal. And uh, we've only existed for 6,000 years. That's true. Yeah. That's what science says. <laughs> That's what science says. I, I just love when people are like, That's not healthy for you. I'm like, well, yeah, 20 years ago, they said that eggs would kill you. Did they? I don't know if it was 20 years ago, but there was a point in time where they're like, You can't eat chicken eggs. It's not good for you. Well, you can't eat raw cookie dough, is what they're saying now. Well, you're not eat. supposed to eat raw eggs regardless, which is why you're not supposed to eat cookie dough. Right. Salmonella. Yeah. But like they would literally say that like cooked eggs is not good for you. Like it does like all this bad, like, like that is, increases your cholesterol like crazy. It's like, that's no. a scary, that's also a scary thing because I eat three eggs a day in like it's 20 years. What are we going to find out was actually terrible for us and that we used all the time. I don't care if it tastes good. I'm eating it. All right. If I die, I die. You know, it's just like there you go. I'm gonna die when live I'm old, life. anyways. Okay, like if you're life. if you're if you're worried about like dying five years earlier, and you're not gonna and you're gonna like make yourself miserable now because you just won't eat what you want to eat. I think that's ridiculous. That so I get that because right. you know you want to enjoy life and whatever. Enjoy it. But also, part of me is like you are ignoring the basic instinct as a human and as a person on this earth, which is to just not die. You know why? Like aside from mating d- not dying is like pretty is like number one on that list but you know of why i don't have to worry about that why because life is too easy go there's on no, there's no survival instinct anymore because we made life too easy which is stupid, why people are depressed stupid apple <laughs> wait what what apple it's like oh we made it easier for you more user friendly oh, yeah no it's oh, too easy that's where you're going with that yeah that's the point that's why people that's why everybody's mad because life is too easy. But so what's interesting about that is like, yeah, in our day-to-day lives, we don't really have as much of a survival instinct. You know, we're not like constantly looking over our, sh- our shoulders. We're not doing all that you stuff. Don't have to forge for food. But did you watch, either of you watch the uh, Fire Festival documentary on Netflix? I started it. Okay. There's, did you at all? I so there's a part a where they talk about when everyone got on the island, saw all of the like FEMA tents and... It was basically like, all right, go find your tent. And they did not have enough tents for everyone. And people went into like this animalistic nature of like, oh, I'm going to pee on other people's mattresses in the tents around me so they can't sleep around me. So I'm like by myself. People were stealing mattresses, stealing this and that to basically survive. Like it was literally, aside from killing. Even though all they had to do was leave because there wasn't even enough festival anyways. (laughs) Well, they couldn't because all the the planes were. all the planes left. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's like going into that most primitive instinct of like, I'm going to do what I need to do to survive. Yeah. It's still there. It just doesn't exist in, in our, our day to day culture. It right. doesn't exist anymore, which is why we made up other things. What? Which is why we made things up. We make things up. Like we make up problems, you know? Example. Okay. Here, here's, here's this, here's a scientific example for you. Okay. Do you know why allergies exist? Go on. Okay. Allergies are only in first world countries. Do you know why? No. Because medicine is so good that our bodies literally got bored and we're like, you know what? I need something to do. And so they created allergies. I'm not making this up either. Like this is a legitimate thing. So like basically what happened was we got so good at curing everything and our body as an immune system needs to work and it needs to actually fight against something, which is why allergies don't kill you. It's just a test run. It's basically it's your body. To do. It's basically your body just giving you some, giving itself something to fight. Stupid body. <laughs> that's literally what. I, but see, that's 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 the problem though. It's like we're made to we're made to fight. We're not made to be relaxed. We're not made to be lazy. Well, no. Yeah. I mean. Right. Which is like which is like not as much like an actual thing, but like because of the way that we live and social media and stuff, create like creates such like a rift. That's why depression's a thing. 
Even depression, more now. Yeah, because depression, depression does not exist in third world countries. Does not exist. And they have nothing that we have. So people that like depression is obviously like a problem and like mental illness is a problem, but it's because our life is too easy, not because it's too hard. Because our body literally made something up. To fight back. Right. Because it's like, it's like, I shouldn't be this comfortable. What do I do? I throw off all my chemical imbalances. To make it seem like there's something for you to worry about. Right. Because technically, we don't have to worry about anything. There's nothing in this in, in America. There's nothing anyone has to worry about at all. It's literally all fabricated. Because honestly, like it, like it, like you have to worry about something, sure, but only because we live in this type of a society. Mm-hmm. Like when I went to Ghana, nobody worried about any of that stuff. Every, like I've never seen happier people than people that live in a mud hut. Ever. And that's including people here that have a shit ton of money. It's not even close. So it's literally just like we, we literally just fabricate everything. So that's an interesting point. Um, I totally see that because, I mean, you you look at third world countries, you look at like what? There's still like that culture out in the Amazon, like it's just primitive people. You know, they have their own way of life. They work hard every day to sustain a living. Yeah. But it's like they're OK with it. In that, in that case, it's ignorance. And sp- ignorance is bliss. bliss. But like once, once like there's people that like, like, cause we would talk to people there that are a little more like sophisticated and like been to America. They're like, we came back cause we weren't happy there. And for us, it's like, how are you not? It's like, well, are any of us happy? Well, right. Well, and it's, it's different <laughs> What's the meaning of for life? us since we were born into it. And right. that's it's just like the life that we know, you know, it's like if we went, like if we went there and oh, it's not that, fun. Like, it would not be good not for fun. us because we are so not, used to this. We're so used to it. And it's like, kind of like to your earlier statement of, you know, Android versus iPhone users, you know. Oh, yeah, yes, it's, we're it's Android. Just, it's <laughs> <what>? <laughs> Superior race. Anyways. Anyways, with flying cars, I thought about this the other day about, you know, would we ever have flying cars and would it be more efficient? Because flying right now is technically more efficient to get somewhere. Like if I want to get to Florida from California, it's going to be faster to fly there, right, than to drive. Yeah, it's six hours. Right. But if everyone has a flying car, if you imagine every car on the street is replaced with a flying vehicle of some sort, is that really going to be faster? Yeah, because there's more lanes. Exactly, because they're going to have to create some sort of structure. One, I don't think we're ever going to have flying vehicles that will be piloted by people. If we're going to have flying transportation that is like from my house to Domino's, so you're saying Coruscant's never going to exist. That's very disappointing. No, I'm saying that it might exist with automated drones. I don't see oh, how it's go. possible to have people, everyday people like you and me, flying a vehicle. Because I think it would just look like Coruscant does. Where it's like, there's it so could, many different it, levels. And it's the like problem with off, flying like is that... Down a level then, the problem with flying versus driving, though, is that flying, you have three dimensions. Driving, you're on a two-dimensional plane. Yeah. You give people another dimension, things are going to go wrong. They already go wrong with two. Yeah. It's because people are dumb. Exactly. And you want to get these people in the air? No, I just want to get myself in the air. <laughs> you can. As someone who is fine on two dimensions, I would love to have a third. You can. It costs a lot of money. Yeah, I know. No, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm flying like on next Thursday, so I understand. But yeah, it's... Are you going on a... I'm going on another trip, yeah. Yeah, but are you on just a normal flight, like American like, Airlines sort of thing? Or are you? No, it's like I don't know how to say it. It's some, uh, it's some United Arab Emirates flight. Oh, okay. So you're not flying yourself, though. You're not actually flying. No, the plane. I'm not flying myself. It's a normal commercial okay. airline. I'm going Got across it. the world in yeah. eighty days. Oh, it wouldn't take nearly that long. It was a hot air balloon. I can get around the world in twenty four hours. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> Imagine. That's just, that's insane to think about. To get around the world in 24 you hours? You can get around the world in 24 hours. Okay. Neat. We got, we well, got this guy. Uh, how long have we been going? An hour and a half. Hour, or, or, no, it's hour it's been about an hour and 20. Yeah. Yeah. Damn, for, a lot longer than what we anticipated. We could yeah. talk for hours. Uh, we could. Oh, especially when we just bring up random stuff. Um, well, I love this because we don't like, I mean, obviously I'm very new to this entire area. So like we don't like talk. Yeah. So, like, when we get in front of here, we can talk about literally anything. I love yeah. It. Okay. Let's, you, yeah. You do you. So, we'll, we'll go ahead and end it here. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. Thanks for listening. If you listen on the audio portion, 
Uh, we'll be back next time with other random things. I'm Jeff. And I'm Dom. I'm Chase. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you guys next time. Have a good time. Have a good life. Have fun. Be safe. Don't die. That too. <laughs>